welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hey, Dental A Team listeners, this is Kira. And you guys, I am beyond giddy about the fact that we are having a way for you guys to kick off your 2023 in the most epic way. That's right. I want you guys to go into 2023 with direction, with a plan, and to actually get something done, done, and done. If you've been looking at that operations manual, it is time, guys. For three months, every single week, I'm going to be doing a workshop with you and your team in January to get that operations manual done in three months. Guys, this is a value of over $10,000 that I know you're gonna freaking love because you're actually going to get it done. So if you wanna get your ops manual done in three months and kick off your January ultra strong, head on over to thedentalyteam.com backslash ops manual and I will see you January 5th for our kickoff. Hello, Dental Team listeners. This is Kira and you guys. I'm on a podcast high right now. I hope you can feel it. I hope you're living it. I actually had a funny sales call the other day. Someone who wants to become a dental team client. I'm talking to this person because they will be a dental team client. And he said, Kira, it's really weird to hear you talk normal. I'm used to listening to you at like 1.2 to 1.5 times the speed. Guys, you and me both. When I listen to the podcast, I put myself on two times the speed. I think I talk way too slow. So I would love to actually have you guys email in hello at the dentalateam.com. This is important information. All of you have a moral obligation to give me some feedback, all right? I need to know, do I talk too fast or too slow on the podcast? Send it in. Kira, you talk way too fast. Kira, you talk way too slow. I want to hear the healthy debate between the listeners to see which one it is. And on that note, guys, if any of you are like this fellow podcaster that I was chatting about, you guys, literally running a dental practice can and should be easy. It does not have to be hard. And we have different options for every type of practice, whether it's do it on your own. So like our dental academy, our our dental university, which is our virtual academy, lots of online training tools for you, or We do it with you, which is group calls, and we help you with a lot of the systems and do it virtually, or we do it for you and we physically fly to your practice. So if you've been thinking, hey, I think I want to make my life easier. I know I could run a dental practice much easier and more efficiently. Give us a call. The answer is, guys, you can do all these things on your own. You do not need me. You do not need our team. It's just a matter of how much time and effort do you want to put into it rather than what you want to get out of it. For me, If there was an easy path, guys, if I listened to a podcast and someone said, Kira, I could literally show you the shortcuts to running a dental consulting company quickly, efficiently, and grow you exponentially, and you would be less stressed, I would sign up in a second, (laughs) especially if they had a proven track record of hundreds of offices where they had success and successful results. So guys, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Hello at thedentalateam.com. We have hundreds of happy customers, people who have reduced their stress, lowered their overhead, increased their profitability, and had happier teams. So email us hello at thedentalateam.com. And today, guys, the topic burning on my heart and soul, the reason I'm on a podcast high, is because I have been hearing this thing of we don't have time. And I did a lot of, of... pieces on time in the past, like, you know, a lot of it's mindset, but I think I need to come in with another portion to this because guess what? My team actually hit a spot where they were telling me, Kira, we don't have time. And what I picked up from, from the years of consulting, from the years of being a business owner is the reality is we always have time for the things we want to do. For example, I have a book that I'm trying to write. I do not quote unquote have time to write that book. The answer is I don't want to prioritize it. It's not that I don't have time. It's truthfully the fact that I don't want to prioritize it. And so therefore I use the excuse of I don't have time. 
So I really want you to ask yourself, do you really not have time? Are they projects that you don't want to do? Or have you just failed to prioritize? And then this is the big piece I want to drive home today. Have the discipline to follow through on what you set aside. Guys, it's super, 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 super easy and will always be easy to take care of urgent things rather than important things. That's life, guys. It is life. I mean, we are going to go to the bathroom before we write a book because we urgently have to go to the bathroom. Like we will make that happen. But prioritizing bigger things, we won't always make it a priority. So I want you guys to really think about all these options that you say, I don't have time for. Because if you look at your day, guys, and I were to come to you and say, all right, and whatever your motivation is, I'm aiming that towards you. If I was writing you a check for $10,000, if I was sending you on your dream vacation, but by the end of the week with no extra hours, you had to be out the door by four o'clock, not just five o'clock, but you had to get all your projects done this week. Could you get it done if on Friday I had that check or your dream vacation and you would get to walk out the door and go, but all these tasks had to be done in the time frame? The answer is yes. You would be looking for it because you want to go on that trip or you want to get that $10,000 check or whatever your motivator is. Maybe I'm going to like watch your kids for you, like not as a creep so you can go and have some alone time, whatever it is, but that's your motivator. And so if that motivation was at the end of the week, you would do it. I know when I'm about to go on a trip, guys, I can get all my work done. I'm like flying high. Yes, it feels a little frantic, but I get it done because I want to go on that trip. So my question is, what do we need to do to help you guys realize that there actually is time and time is just an excuse and a story that we've been saying for years and years. And so we're making that real. That's my first point to make is you're making that real. You're living that truth. And so therefore that's becoming your reality. So that's number one. Number two is, okay, great. So how do we fix that? The solution is simple. Most of the time, things are actually very simple. We just choose not to implement or execute. The answer is very simple. You block specific time for you to work on those projects. I don't care what team member department you are, dental assistants, hygienists, front office, office managers, regional managers, doctors, blocking time. If I look at my entire week and I work, let's say 32 hours a week, if I took one hour a week, so that would mean I would only get to work 31 hours in that week, I promise you your product, production's not going to go down. Your productivity is not going to go down. There will not be a fire burning and your team will be okay if you took that one hour off. But yet we often make ourselves in the most respectful way, maybe a little holier than thou. Maybe we give ourselves too much credit where we think, oh no, I, there's no way I could step away from the front desk. My team would hate me guess what? They actually won't. It's one hour. You have to go to doctor's appointments. You call out sick. You have to take time off. You're gone. You have to take lunch. These are things that you already are leaving for and your team doesn't fall apart. So why don't we consistently do that? So that's the easy solution is we block admin time, CEO time. For me, it's called business development time. My business development time is Wednesday mornings from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Don't you dare touch that spot, block that spot, put anything in that spot unless I'm traveling to an office. That is when I work on the hard pieces of the business. But I know I have a spot dedicated to business development time where I'm working on these important projects that really have no space in my urgent days. So with that said, the next piece is like my team, they all have admin time, client follow-up time, but I guess this is the next piece and it is my favorite quote. It literally sits on my counter in my kitchen. I stare at every single day and you know, and I'm headed to the fridge and I see this sucker and it's like discipline equals freedom. And I'm like, ah, just kidding. I don't need to eat that. I'm just bored. Okay. I purposely stick it in there to remind myself that in all of my life, discipline equals freedom. And so often we make these blocks but what do we say? Oh, but this patient called in and oh, I have to take care of this. BS guys, you just don't want to have the discipline to actually follow through on your commitments. So that's where I've got so much fire and passion is because if we can actually own it, we can say like, you know, what reality is I don't want to do this project. So therefore patient and fires all feel more important. They feel like I'm doing something better, but the bottom line is we're not disciplined enough to stick to the commitments we make. Dang, I'm coming in hot, guys. How you feeling out there? I just think I want to like cut through the chatter and get to the root cause of what really is causing this. I don't have time. I know every person has time. 
I know every person is not a robot, nor are we expected to be efficient and on like top notch running at high speed all day long. But what we are expected to do is to keep our commitments. One hour, two hours a week will not destroy your practice. It will actually enhance and elevate and expand your practice and all these other pieces. So I would just ask the question of where are you at on this? Are you the one who is not making time? and finding the time and blocking the time. Because if so, that's an easy fix. You got to stick that in your calendar, right? Easy fix that you're going to be committed to and you'll execute on. Or are you the person who has it blocked in your calendar, but choose not to follow through on those things? Guys, that is discipline. That is work. That is a personality. And that is something that you can actually develop. That is a culture. That is having integrity with yourself. That is following through on the commitments you make with yourself, which I oftentimes think are sometimes harder. Because guess what? It's just at the end of the day, you, yourself, and I, like not Kira, but you, right? Like I'd say like me, myself, and I, (laughs) Um, that's really who's at the end of my day. It doesn't matter. I can tell Jason, I can make up whatever story I want to have like, Jay, I was so productive today. I like cranked it. I answered all these phones. I scheduled all these patients. And he never has to know that I didn't take my admin time. And I look like a rock star to him. The, The urgent things, the scheduling to production. I hit my doctor's goal. I closed all these cases. Those feed our ego, guys. Those are some nice endorphin pieces for us. Doctors like, I crushed it. I hit my production. I helped these patients. I served 20 patients today. Fantastic high five. Are you making sure you're also serving yourself and your practice that's ultimately serving all these patients? Are you making sure we're taking care of those bigger projects that are actually going to move the practice forward? Things like planning out cases and getting those cases to your front office. That way they can get those patients scheduled back in having training with our team and looking to see where the gaps are, going out on the floor and listening to exams and hygiene appointments, hearing how they're talking about perio and fluoride rather than what we think they're talking about. Are you taking time to order and look for deals and make sure that we're staying below that four to five percent of collections every single month? Are you doctors spending time looking at your P&Ls to see where are Where am I at on my numbers? Where are we going? And am I being a wise steward over this business to ensure that our practice is moving forward? Office managers, are you sitting your little booties in that chair and writing out all these protocols to make sure an onboarding process is efficient? I get it. You've got to hire. But do you also have the onboarding piece to make sure that their onboarding is successful rather than just running the door of new hire, turnover, new hire, turnover, new hire, turnover? Are you actually stopping the madness by having the dedicated, disciplined time to execute on? Now, again, it's an uncomfortable topic. That's why I'm coming in hot today, guys. This is the loving coach consultant Kira coming to you saying, I don't want the excuses anymore. Let's get past those excuses because excuses don't get us anywhere. And I have a fun quote from yesterday that I'll read you guys. Tiffany got me one of the coolest gifts. It's a quote every day and I love it. Yesterday's quote was, the best way to get something done is to begin. And I think often we make all the excuses and we plan like today, I was trying to make pumpkin squares, guys. Like I love pumpkin squares. Tis the season. It's fall. I've got the best recipe. If you know me and you've had them, you know that these are like crack cocaine. They're amazing. They're so good. But yet the, the energy effort to get to the store and buy the things, I was like, gosh, I just like don't have time to get to the store. That's not true. I'm prioritizing all of my work items instead of prioritizing my, like that's not super important, but it is important. I have guests coming over and I want to go see uh, my dad's coming in for his birthday tomorrow. Like, hey guys, the, it's a midnight hour on my personal life right now. But yet I was like, well, where's my time? I can quickly sit here. I can order the groceries. They can be delivered. That's something I could do. And I could have time to podcast. Right now I would have been at the grocery store and instead I wanted to podcast. So I found a solution, but the answer wasn't that I didn't have time. It was, I don't like to go to the grocery store. That's really my problem. And driving there and driving back, we moved. And so the grocery store feels forever away. That's really my problem. It's not that I don't have time. It's that I don't want to make the time to do it. So I need to have the discipline to either execute on that consistently or find another solution. Sometimes delegating is the solution. I delegated to a nice Instacart shopper right now named Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey, for making it so I can podcast. So we either delegate and leverage 
or we have discipline to take that time. During business development, I am not grocery shopping, guys. I am not answering emails. I am not talking to clients, period, ever, no, no, no. Because that biz dev time, my block time every single week is for us to grow the business. For as an office manager, my admin time is for me to grow this practice, to create the protocols, to follow up on Cedar, HR, the phone company, the things that I haven't had quote unquote time in my busy day, filling a schedule, talking to team members, making sure we're hitting production that will move us forward and make our life easier. So I would encourage each of you to one, cut the excuses and realize you just don't want to do it. And let's be disciplined to block the time because we have it. And let's start changing our story from instead of I don't have time to I have the time and I'll find the time or I'm a time master. I master time. Time doesn't master me. That's something I really thought about. Like, am I allowing time to like, am I allowing life to dictate my time or am I actually creating my life? So I would just ask you guys, implore those questions, enjoy those questions. And if you need help on it, reach out. Hello at thedentalyteam.com. Sometimes all we need is just an accountability buddy to hold us accountable to what we've committed to doing. And guys, I love to be that person for you. I've, le- I've trained myself, I've taught myself, and now I get to help you guys. So guys, try it out. Email me, hello at thedentalyteam.com. And as always, thanks for listening. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.